Hello guys, welcome to this new video. It's actually on land use classification using Landsat 8 image. And today's agenda is at first we are going to do cloud correction. That is, we'll remove all cloud pixels. Then we'll see how to use NDVI index to how can you more easily extract or identify built up areas. Then we'll see how to build model. And we'll see a random forest actually. Then we'll also see how to fine tune a number of trees. Actually, like how many trees are going to be good or best for this mod for your model. And finally, we'll export our classified image and open it in ArcGIS and calculate area and draw legend. And it's, it can be also it can also be easily done in Google Earth Engine, but I think uh, doing that in ArcGIS is a lot a lot easier than Google Earth Engine. So, without further ado, let's start get into the video. Now, at first, we're going to see one example, and now let's actually one Sentinel two image. Now you can see these are all um, what croplands these things. Some of them may not be now planted crops and may not have crops, but in some day of the year there will be there will be crops. Okay, so it's totally legitimate to assign them as crop plants. And if we see the what classified image, you can see all of them are classified as this annual crops. Okay. And here you can see this this dense vegetations are assigned woodlands, and we'll see that also in my study area. Okay. So in our study area, we'll not use all of them. We'll use maybe five land different land use classes. Okay. Now let's see what they used as bare soil. Oh, no. there's no bare bare soil. Okay, and you can also see the reference and um, what article? It's uh, this one, object oriented classification. And they have also put a link of Google Earth Engine in this article. You can easily go to the Google Earth Engine notebook. Okay, now back to our earth engine okay now we are going to see our own classification okay so now we are going to start with our opening our landsat 8 image so to do that you need to just write here landsat just this one actually now let's go to band Yep, bands and you can see one band here pixel quality band we'll be using that to remove cloud shadow and clouds here you can see this here bit 5 that is equivalent to cloud and bit 3 is cloud shadow okay we'll use that you'll see that fine so we have loaded our data then we are going to filter by date here yeah, filter bounds is our region actually we haven't specified in the static region yet but we'll do that so filter in data I am using 2015 yeah 2015 12 months mean data or median is and filtering by cloud cover less than 10 percent so we are accepting those images where cloud cover is less than five percent okay fine now to what to remove cloud shadow and cloud cover you need to uh, map some functions and also to add some indices like ndbi and the bi you need to also add some func functions dot map so here you need to pass your function i have already written that function up here you can see for cloud masking this function name is mask clouds and for indices it's indices okay? 
So at first we are, we'll, we are going to see how you're going to mask clouds. Here you can see this bitwise masking less than less than three means we are extracting all the cloud shadow data then clouds okay and we are selecting that pixel quality band from our landscape 8 image okay and then we are masking that out equal zero that means we are making all those data to zero that means clear condition again clouds equal zero so you need to do that for both of them equal zero equal zero here and finally we are returning that image and dividing by 10,000 for scaling of our image because in machine learning if your data is scaled then it's better for our model performance okay fine now in this function we are just calculating NDVI and NDVI. For NDVI band is 6 and 5 and VI is 5, 4. Okay. And renaming it NDVI and VI. Now our image collection is going to have two additional bands NDVI and NDVI after mapping that. So we are going to map them. One is mask clouds. and another is dot map uh, in DSS, i guess yep dot mean now we are going to clip our image for our study area so for that we need to specify a study region i'm going to write on rectangle draw on rectangle Mm, here so let's do that okay this one and the rename it let's say I'm region whatever you want study ready okay and uncheck it now you can do what you can clip it here dot clip region region but now if you write that here if you clip it before that mean then that's not going to work because before this mean you have one image collection and as far as I'm concerned, clipping doesn't work on image collection. But if you want to enforce it, you need to again use this map function. So that's, that means you need to clip it one by one on each images. So taking that mean is a, uh, after clicking that after meaning, it's really good idea. Okay. So now let's print our data. Print landscape date yeah 14 bands let's see all those bands you can see ndvi and vil two additional bands okay now let's uh what let's visualize this image map dot add um, layer map dot layer what edit and then I want you need to pass one visualization parameter okay then I'm going to pass the name of this layer so let's say natural color or composite okay so uh, I am leaving that what uh, visualization parameter empty because I'm going to figure that out which one is going to best suit. Let's just at first run it, then I'll see. Yeah, you can see it's just white and not white. Now we are going to use stretching 100% and four at uh, five four three. Sorry, four three two. 
natural color at first. Okay. Yeah, you can see one nice image. And now we can import it. Import. Because if you don't import it, uh, every time you run it, then you need to again fix it here. So we have imported it. You can see now there's one thing image with spams. Okay. I can do that. Uh, and it composite visualization parameters okay and then here you can pass that com this okay now if I rerun it oh what oh yeah don't need a bracket anymore yeah it's now working so at, at first, let's see our image, where is, let's say, um, forest or where is bare soil. I can clearly see this zone is actually, what, built up area. If we turn on our satellite image and, uh, yeah, you can see, this is all of them are, all of them are built up area. And this one here is actually forest area or you can say woodland and let's see our natural color image you can see yeah and these are I would say what it's agricultural field cropland and some of them are now I guess a barrel soil bare land you can see um, yeah here this one now bare here it's also kind of bare soil we can still we can still assign them as a, what vegetation field a cropland but as these things are now bare so it would be better to classify them as bare soil now let's see some other false color images let's say five four three five four three let's see what, how it turns out oh it's different why is this thing so white now let's do 90 percent data yeah now it's pretty well good yeah so over here you can see these things are not red so it's not red that means there's no vegetation so we can assign them as bare soil and you'll notice here are two different types of red color one is dark red another is just um, light colored light red so light red are actually croplands or less healthy vegetation and dark vegetation, dark red color is actually forest lands or densely vegetated or woodlands. Okay. So we can clearly assign them these areas as bare soil okay? for this year. Now let's see some other, it seems like this area is devoid of water bodies or less water bodies. Let's see some false color image for water bodies. Let's say um, seven, seven, four, two, seven, five, three. Yeah. Oh, nice color. Huh? Oh, it's not yet clear here. I can, I think here it's a water body. Yeah, this is water body. Now let's see some other things. Six, five, four. By this color, you can easily differentiate what is a, a forest area and what is a agricultural area. Okay, these are all agricultural fields. And this one is forest dense vegetation. This one, 
for water I guess uh, which one is going to do better it's seven six four let's see how it turns out I think we need to do a bit of stretching now water body is not very clear in yeah, we can see a bit of water here yeah black color okay so now we can also use some other parameters like NDVI to differentiate vegetation or crop lands from bare lands let's uh, do that so now we're going to create one new variable we don't need to paint it again NDVI okay so let's say bar NDVI equal L8 dot select a band name was in capital letter NDVI this one we're selecting this band from 12 different bands okay and we are going to dot select and greater than 0.275 we are only going to see where NDVI value is greater than 0.275 okay some people use 0.25 but I am going to use 0.275 okay and now to visualize them these params NDVI experiments bar okay so we need to write max mean maximum minimum range so minimum let's say 0.275 and max is Oh, it's not equal. It's not that shitty JavaScript. Max is less than one. Okay. And palette. Oh, that's that's the P A L E double D E, I guess. And palette is going to be for less than 0.275. Everything is black. Okay and for greater than 0.275 everything is going to be what green grwm okay so this is our close the bracket this is our NDVI visible parameters now we're going to visualize that LA to be replaced by NDVI and visualization is going to be NDVI his PRMS okay and we're renaming that layer to NDVI okay let's see oh hopefully there's no error Okay, now you can see that built up areas are quite easily differentiated, but it does also include some bare lands. And we are now going to see right here they are telling us that there's no vegetation here. Okay, so let's see what's in there. Okay, I think natural color isn't going to be a good one. We're going to use five, four, three, and ninety percent. 
it does take some time time yeah now it's okay. so I think this one is the any vegetation maybe so they're telling us this one is bare soil or less amount of vegetation also this one so I think uh, using this NDVI, it's good to select bare soil. There are some other robust methods using two different indices, and also you can use uh, built-up area index for built-up areas. But more robust, uh, what index-based methods for land use classification is time-consuming, and I think. We'll see that in another new video, separate video. Uh, for this one, let's just see. It's just plain indices. So right here, you can see this one is bare soil, I think. Let's see what our NDVI one tells about it. Yeah, it's telling us, yeah, this is wrong. You can also use uh, like, what, seven, Seven, where is it? Seven, six, four. For vegetation inspection and ninety percent. Yeah, this one here. They're telling it yellow color. Okay, but I'll stick with five four three. Five four three. Yeah. Okay, so that's a bit to the NDVI. Now let's see how to use NDVI for built up areas. NDVI, okay var ndbi equal l8 similarly l8 dot select ndbi okay now you're going to use another variable again ndbi equal ndbi dot greater than we're going to use the threshold greater than point 0.1 I saw in one paper that they're saying that LVI will be greater than point 0.1 but less than point 0.3 are built up areas but I guess that does differ from region to region and it's not totally a correct one their accuracy was I guess 70 percent okay so greater than point 0.1 and and less than ndvi dot lt less than less than what point three okay and now visualization parameter ndvi is let's say what max sorry minimum and minimum equal point one or oh, not equal it's dictionary type point one and max is point three now palette pa palette spelling pa l e t t e okay palette is going to be um black and green i guess black and red okay or uh, white and red so all of the built up regions will be shown as red color okay so again we're going to add another layer let's just control c control b what is this cross sign i don't know okay so here visualization ndbi not ndbi ndbi now visualization parameter is 
and dbi is and our layer name is going to be ndbi okay okay now let's run them and see what happens okay yep and if we are yeah this one this red one is showing us all of them are built up area according to NDVI index but it's not quite good one as I said using some modifications there are some robust methods to be more accurate but this image is very clear here I think we don't need any indices but when you are going to use low quality image like Landsat 5 or Landsat 7 then i think these methods with those advances with those modifications these indices are something on which you are going to rely a lot so it's worth mentioning to for your convenience actually i think it's good to know that okay so it's telling us these red zones are actually quite built up areas but somewhere they got mistaken because you can see here they are mistaken here yeah. this uh they have taken some areas as built up regions but they are actually uh what bare soil right here you can see this is a this was a bare soil in 2015 but our NDVI is telling us so at least it gives you one indication where you need to pay close attention you need to pay attention or you need to inspect with regard to whether it's a, a bare soil or a built up area okay so that's it that's all about indexes and now we are going to classify it at first you need to take samples just like you do in ArcGIS or Google Earth, sorry, or QGIS. So to take samples, you need to go down here, new layer, and rename it. Let's set our first one is going to be what forest or woodlands. And you need you can't use any space here. We need to use this what what is called I forgot it. woodland okay underscore and it should be a feature collection we need to add property okay property lc it should be identical for all the land use classes value let's say first one is zero that is our class one class zero class two that that's it Okay, so our woodland is going to be class zero. Okay, so this one created. Now you can take samples. You can take samples like this one, just point, 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 or you can take samples as polygons. So let's say this one. I'll just natural color is okay for this one and remember to take cover all the what spectral range what i mean by all spectral range is that let's say you are taking uh, water water samples okay so you are taking water samples for river area or lake area okay fine but you didn't collect any water sample from uh, ocean area now when you are going to classify it, it's going to misclassify your ocean water because you didn't give it any sample from ocean water, okay? So you need to cover all the spectral ranges from each classes. That's it. So now let's say this one is our forest also, you can see that. Forest or you can say woodlands. I'm going to also this one. No. But this one, yeah. This one is woodland. Uh, 
Ah, this sample collection step is actually most time consuming one and no, you need to take many samples as you as many sample as possible okay the more sample you have the more good your model is going to be but samples should be qualityful if you give provide garbage the output will always be garbage okay and another another thing is that let's say you are taking samples five samples from forest but 50 samples from water then it's going to give some priority on water so your <clears throat> your model may have some class imbalance so you don't you can't do that you need to take um, similar number of samples or maybe plus minus five standard deviation is okay but try to be equal number okay so let's take some sample from here this one over here also okay i'm not going to take more but you need to take more as i said you need to cover the whole spectral range let's go to another one let's say what um, cropland feature collection and property lc and value is zero one first one was zero this one going to be one <clears throat> so now i am going to use uh, 543 and 90 percent so let's say this is a i'm also going to classify it as As long as I can see the red color, I'll say it's cropland. Okay, so you need to take more samples. It's just time consuming one. I'm not going to do my take more. So let's go to bare soil. Feature collection property LC M zero sorry one two okay so now bare soil so for bare soil I'm going to use NDBI okay here one oh no it's water so you can see water is has also low NDBI value these are all water here you can see a little bit now it's built up this one is going to be one you can see the shape i'm not going to take any more okay geometry feature collection property lc value 0 1 2 3 i guess it's isn't it so i think at first i'm um, writing all the classes at, at the beginning is good one 0 1 yeah so it's our water yes now for water, I'm going to use seven five three.
you can see here some water on. yeah I think it's what well, that time it was water yeah you can see here it's water so this was a water body this one also I think this um, polygon type is time consuming I'm going to use this point point it's more convenient one. here you can see some more water bodies all of them are water and there's a lake like thing isn't it So it's taking too much points from water, I think. And again taking. Okay, fine. Okay. Now the last one is going to be our Built a region. Built a region. Okay. So this one, this one, And here I'm going to use a polygon. These are all big depressions. So it's so tedious work to take samples from all the sides. Okay, let's say we have done with our sampling. Now we are going to classify our model. I have to uh, save our time. I have already written those codes. After taking samples, you need to merge all of them. So you can. Let's, let's see how many we have. This water will damp bear soil cropland woodland so water dot march woodland then cropland then bear soil also build up okay we are merging all of them let's run it if there's any problem no there's no problem now we are selecting some bands here we're selecting some bands to participate in our model okay and here Yes, we are selecting all those bands. Select or select those bands. Fine. Now we are going to write here our sampling thing. So after collecting samples, you need to do this thing. It's called image dot sample regions. We're going to sample all those regions. Collection. Collection is your classes. Or oh, what is this classes? These classes. We have merged. We have merged all of them, so it's now a feature collection. So this collection is that properties is that property what you have we have stored here. Oh no properties feature collection properties LC four. Okay. Did I do that? Yeah, this LC is our property. Fine. Now scale is 30. You can you know let's say 8 image scale 30. And this random column is to create one random column for 
and splitting our data splitting our samples for training and testing our model okay you'll see that here so we are splitting 0.8 we are going to use 80 percent for model training and less remaining 20 percent for model testing how our model is going to perform on some unseen data okay so here is less than split 80 percent okay and greater than or equal it's 20 percent <sighs> now we are going to see how many sample we are using not actually sample pixels this one here is going to uh, at first this one is going to print out how many samples we have actually how many total pixels we have and how many pixels we are using as training sample and testing sample let's run it see if everything is going fine training total 1600 okay 1300 we are using as training remaining for testing testing okay fine another step is to build our model here uh, storing our model in classifier and we're using random forest at first we're using five diff five uh, trees okay our tree depth is five train okay so it's small forest dot train and we're going to pass training sample and selecting all those bands here so i'm going to do ndbi and what i want to add ndbi as well ndbi okay Let's see input properties is our bands, all those bands here. Five, six, four, and if we have five, six, four. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to see our model. There are some other parameters that this model takes, but we're just going to see those um, what number of trees. Let's run it. And see um, what our model says. We can we have zero, one, two, three, five different classes. Okay, number of trees five. Okay, that's it. Some out bag error estimate. We didn't specify that. Okay, now we are going to see our model accuracy. So at first you're going to see validation data. So validation is our here testing data. Samples 20% data. So validation if we are testing dot classify classifier. This classifier is this one. Okay. So this classifier is actually one function, built-in function, and here we are going to pass our model. Okay. Now test accuracy validation this one dot real matrix and in either matrix you're going to pass this LC parameter and this classification. Okay, you didn't write any variable named classification, it's just built in classification. Okay. Now we're going to print accuracy and also real matrix. Validation matrix test accuracy test accuracy data accuracy. Yeah. So let's see at first this one is your matrix and this one is what accuracy 99.7 based on our own data we are 99.7 percent accurate. Okay, we haven't used any ground truth value. Okay. So now classify that image, a landscape 8 image. Okay. 
now image dot select bands where did this image come from this one image lh dot select bands we are selecting all these bands okay so image dot select we have already selected them so image dot classify that classify okay so now our landscape 8 image is classified and we are going to display that as a layer so it's classified and we have five different uh, what colors for the five different classes and our first class was woodland okay so woodland is dark green then cropland it's light green then bare soil bare soil should be let's say cyan okay after bare soil is water let's say dark blue dark blue yeah and red is our built up region okay now run it ah oh, luckily there's no error fine and uncheck them all I'll leave them and we're going to unselect them all now you can see I found that this point point type uh, sampling isn't very good one and uh, that what uh, polygon type sample collection is good it turns out better accuracy okay so you can see our image classification wasn't bad it was uh, sometimes it did classify the roads as well but earlier I did uh, on same region I did one classification that was more accurate because I did give more samples so you can see and uh, these red zones are uh, what built up area and these are some built up here it did misclassify some bare soil here you can see let's open natural color image yeah these are we didn't uh, take any sample from here for bare soil so we need to take more samples okay so fine. but I find that this Google Earth engine does really good job compared to ArcGIS or QGIS when you are especially uh, working on a large area and also you can see that water body did we classify it okay yeah what's happened here oh that's a road that's why it was red in color okay so I think <clears throat> Yeah, they also classified this water body. So fine, good one. Comparatively. Now let's see some other model fine tuning. However, let's say uh, we are using what? How many trees? We are using five trees, but uh, five may not be the good one. There may maybe some. Uh, let's say ten trees are going to be best for this model so we are now going to see how many trees are going to be best for this model so what we are doing is we are generating 3 to 50 3 to 50 and with the interval of 2 at first let's say there is no interval so 3 to 50 that is 47 different numbers 
47 trees 3 4 5 6 7 h so uh, we just uh, giving a interval 2 okay so 3 5 7 9 trees and we are passing it on our random forest okay training everything is fine just we are using one function okay so and finally we will be turning accuracy on our test set and then a bit of charting and let's run it and see how many trees are going to be best for this model oh it's like one 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 it's a bit weird isn't it we saw that 99.7 seems like this model is overfitting maybe okay so you may have a different curve different chart okay i saw some up down depends on your training data okay so now let's say you want to Im export your model your image your classified image so image is classified classed or is our classed image you can see here we are classified we, are, we have applied our model on our landscape 8 image so we are going to now export this one description levels belgium scale 30 and region is our star region so let's again run it ah we don't need to do that and you can see our task we have one task I have previously downloaded that now let's again download it Belgium 2 GOT okay fine folder name you can specify folder name or not that doesn't matter okay run it well now you can see our upload is export is done now going to this what our drive and I'm going to download it with gem to is it downloaded? Yeah, it's downloaded. Now back to our ArcGIS and let's go to downloads. It was with gem two. Yeah, here is LLC with gem two. Now you can see zero to four. That means we have five different classes: zero, one, two, three, four and go to properties and symbology we are going to use uh, classified no. no no unique values yeah and that's it apply okay now you we have five different classes our okay now to calculate area of each different classes you need to convert it into a UTM projection zone projection curve you can see go to source you can see your geographic coordinate system is xy it's in degree because it's in WGS 1984 yeah WGS 1984 your coordinate system okay so we need to transform it into UTM zone. Control F. Let's say uh, raster project and this first one data management tool. Okay, so our raster is going to be this one. Click file. Then our output coordinate for Belgium. I think uh, it's UTM zone 32. So we're going to project it coordinate system, then world UTM actually UTM, then 
WGS 1984 Northern Hemisphere UTM 32 Yeah, 32 M. Okay, then let's just leave that by default one. Well, now our rip projection is down. Now we are going to see area of each class. Okay. So go to properties, source and copy or special resolution, control C. Okay. Then again pro uh, properties not uh, attribute table. You can actually may uh, calculate area in Google Earth engine very easily. But I'm using RGS cause your final exported map is going to be processed in RGS or QGIS. Area and let's say double floating point. Okay, so now we are going to field calculator and parenthesis, open parenthesis and close it. Then inside it, you are going to click on count. Then multiply it by our resolution two times. Okay. Then we're going to divide it by 10 to the power 6, 1 to the power 6. Okay. So that our unit will be in kilometer square. Uh, if everything is fine, then okay. Okay. Yep. You can see all the areas are in <clears throat> now kilometer square 90,078. Did I do anything wrong? I don't know which one is this. Ah. And 5 plus 5 is bear soil, I guess. On oh, no, the water, water body. You can see here. Yeah? Plus 5. Well, now to add classes, we're going to add another field. SSC LAWCS classes. It's going to be text. Okay. But what? What I? Oh, I did another one. Classes one. Okay. So our first class. This one, let's say, is. Built up soil, built up area. Oh, you need to start editing. Yeah, so this is built up region. This is water. This is what? This one. Bare soil. Bare soil, then this one. It's forest, I guess. Oh, no, it's um, cropland. Then the first one is forest. Okay. So save edits and stop editing. Everything is done. Now go to again properties. Symbology value. We're going to use classes one. Add all values. Apply. Okay, now you can see we have one true legend. So I am going to say forest is. Now you can see our. You can change colors. I am just not going to waste our more time. So you can see forest are in blue one. Green one is our crop yellow built up and that what right, is this color now you can add all those things grids legends everything you want so it's now a exportable image okay so that's it for now i think you have learned something new though it's a long video so that's it for now if you find this video helpful or if you have any kind of suggestions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. I, I hope I will see you in my next video.